Well, let's um, come in at what, what's happening with young people, uh, uh, correction, elderly people. Young people we know, that's a massive industry. We produced the figure a couple of days ago of £19 billion pounds of what children's worth to the British government. Elderly people worth a fortune to the drug companies while they're alive. Uh, but the problem is staff and the solution, according to uh, this article, was robots. I'll do this very quickly because we covered it. Uh, so they're trialling robots in care homes. And uh, not to worry because these robots are going to be able to go around and see whether people look happy. And something I found frightening was this a uh, very childish response from a, um, a chief social worker, Lynn Romeo from South End Social Services. She was enchanted by Pepper and she thinks there's real opportunities for him to support and enhance engagement. And uh, Pepper was the robot. Pepper's the robot. And then if you ask Pepper how much he costs, he'll tell you that money's not everything. It's all about love. So this Japanese company is producing this robot uh, for love. They're not charging at all. Well, they are, of course. So at that point, let's bring in um, Dr. Graham Downing. And uh, Graham, I know that uh, you have been talking out Ian Crane's AV 8.1 event recently, warning people about what's coming in the field of AI. And um, I'll just bring this first slide on and then we'll open up with you. Uh, this is uh, New York Times breakthroughs in data processing and, and uh, conversation systems are helping more and more companies to implement AI in their operations. This is all good news, isn't it? Well, uh, well, this is a huge subject. I mean, I've done two talks now, one at AV8 and one at AV8.1, and I urge the, the, your listeners and viewers to get them from, I think, from you guys or from Ian, uh, Ian R. Crane's site, because I really lay out, um, you know, a lot to do with the subject. There's a lot of science behind this, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of the problems you're seeing in the world that are related to this. I don't think it's good um, for, for several reasons. I mean, one of the things that just to touch on here with the NHS is that they are absolutely bringing in artificial intelligence, not just in robots, uh, but also in how they manage their data and how they diagnose. They're, they want to uh, bring in technology that replaces doctors so they can get more accurate quote unquote diagnosis that they reckon computers can do it better. And of course, in America, you've got surgery um, uh, being produced by robotic arms. That's many years. Now, there's many, many cases against that. They're suing uh, the manufacturers of those machines because um, there's been error and people have died uh, using them. And there's people pro and for uh, that on either side. So there's many, many issues. Um, you know, keeping it just towards the NHS, there's also other problems because when you bring in this artificial intelligence, what they're saying is you need to release all the anonymized political data. And that's a direct quote. Uh, from an article um, talking about the from the uh, mentioned the director of the NHS, so they're talking about accessing uh, all your data, and 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 and, and it, it's written political in it as well, which is very interesting. <clears throat> and the question is, do we want all this information being given out um, to all these people? Do we want them controlling us and and linking our health to what our beliefs are or what our lifestyle is? And this is yet another aspect of it as well. And I think you may have up in screen. Is that Professor Lieber? You've got That's Professor screen. Lieber. It says in 2011, Lieber was recognized by Thomson Reuters as a leading chemist in the world based on the impact of his scientific publications. And there's a quote there which says, personal computing will, have, will become very, very personal. Currently, our interface is through the peripheral nervous system, input by touch and voice, output to eyes and ears. In a very personal future, we work directly from our brains, integrating 3D nanoelectronics with our neural networks. Uh, we will have already created the blueprint for uh, innervated or cyborg tissue and recently shown how electronics can be injected into and intermingled with, with the brain to modify Descartes' co uh, cogito ergo sum. Uh, my future of computing is, I think, therefore it happens. Yeah, so there's, there's different aspects to artificial intelligence. Um, and there's different aspects to transhumanism, which is what you're talking about there. Um, some people perceive that it's many, many, many years away. And some people perceive that, oh, we don't have to worry about it. It's never going to happen. They haven't really developed the computer power to give us all these problems. And that's not necessarily correct, because one of their goals is to um, upload our, conscious, our consciousness. 
our minds into these machines. I mean, this is, sounds crazy, but that's actually one of the goals. We're not there yet, although they are alluding to they do have an idea that they can do that a lot quicker than what we may have thought. However, where we are at the moment is we are at definitely at a place where they can, uh, they can literally plug you into the Internet, which is just to give you a very simple way of, of understanding that. And what that uh, scientist there is describing now, yeah, and uh, if you want to lead on with that mind reading rats there. There you go. And, yeah, well, th this is really what the experiment is. It's not just literally, what they do is they inject uh, a mesh uh, which interfaces uh, in between your skull and your brain. And what it does is it literally is used to connect you to the internet. Okay, they've done the experiments on it, it's tolerated very well. And this rats was some of the early experiments on it. And what they did was they connected these rats uh, via. Uh, they were separated by thousands of miles and what they found was they could connect them to work as one and they call it a brain net um, and what they're really saying is that well to the to the listener you all understand that as the hive mind now if people think this is somehow um, sci-fi or conspiracy theory they're absolutely wrong and they're way behind this because this is here now it's been done it, it's been done in experiments and it's been proven to work. And this is the technology, this is the first phase of technology that's going to come after the kind of uh, the um, AI goggles, you know, the kind of Google virtual world stuff. After that is coming this stuff. And this is, this is going to come in a lot sooner than you think. And quite frankly, it terrifies me. Uh, Graham, I'll just um, interject there. As I read that, that uh, particular slide, um, my mind goes to the people who would be there in the laboratory taking animals and carving them up in order to experiment in this way. I, I find this absolutely obscene. And I, I think that the, the human beings that are involved in this, these are very, very dangerous people. They are very dangerous. And uh, I, in the first um, uh, lecture I gave, and I actually quoted uh, UK professors, I think at least one we're gonna mention in a second. And one of them wrote a book on it. And he actually put forward the idea that what we should do we should experiment on people that want to commit suicide. In other words, we should do experiments that probably end up in their death, but the data we could get would be really, really useful for us because we could <clears throat> move forward with our sort of transhumanist agenda. And, you know, and to a sane human being that has any sense of morality or soul or, or feeling, that is absolutely horrifying. But this is the kind of mentality that you're dealing with. And really, it's a, it's a very sociopathic, a mentality with this really low or very little empathy for the for human beings and they see us as 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 an old model they see us that they have to progress further from us that we're nothing we're kind of like the the, the 1.0 they want to go on to the 2.0 and the 3.0 model uh, and they and quite frankly i think they're insane some of them um, so this one uh, is the guardian uh, elon musk wants to connect brains to uh, computers with a new company so so is, is he talking about human brains now or is he still working with rats now this is the, well. His company is the 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 business side of those experiments you saw. He, the mesh uh, technology is the technology that he's developing. That he he's talking about bringing it as a product for for us, for you and me to use. Now, okay, putting aside the craziness of that, and putting aside the fact, well, we might go well. We don't want to use that. The reality is this: when you look at their models for this, their models don't allow you not to use this you are going to have to move with this quote unquote not, not least because you will not be able to keep up with the artificial intelligence itself and it will price you out of the market and his his reaction is the hegelian di dialect where he says look you know if we don't do this we aren't going to be able to keep up with ai and ai will dominate us and 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 eventually will eradicate us and this is not you know a, 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 a wild thing he's saying it's just a very very established thought that if we don't keep up with this stuff it will eradicate us and you've only got to look to history you've only got to look to science you've only got to look to nature if you introduce a species which is more advanced then the lower species eventually is subjugated and got rid of and this is a very big worry in in academic circles about this and not everybody's on board with this ai kind of technology but unfortunately the leaders and the movers and shakers in this are being funded at the highest level and through governments and this is a very very big worry because it doesn't appear to be any common sense break on it. Um, so let's look at uh, one of the scientific reports and this is from 2015 building an organic computing device with multiple interconnected brains it says brain nets i.e networks formed by multiple animal brains cooperating and exchanging information in real time through direct brain to brain interfaces could provide the core for a new type of computing device an organic computer 
Here we describe the first experimental de demonstrations of such a brain net built by interconnecting four adult brain rats. We've talked about the, the coverage of this, but uh, what they're saying there, um, a brain net, uh, multiple animal brains, uh, but what we're developing is an organic computer. At what point do they feel that animal brains are not uh, sufficient for this and they need to look at some uh, quote-unquote higher uh, form of uh, brain matter? Well, this is it. Really, this is the work that's leading on to that. And as I've said, the decision's already been made. It's already done. And, you know, and, and you've got Musk now, who's, you know, with billions involved in these companies, uh, setting this technology up to bring it so that your kids can be plugged in. And this is, and the models they talk about is that you are connected as an organic computer. I mean, this is, this is one of the, the most um, conspir quote unquote conspiratory theories that's been around for, for, for many, 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 many years, decades. But the reality is, is we're now facing the reality of that. It is no longer a conspiracy. The science is done. They're rolling out the commercial aspect to this and they're developing this. And you will see this. And this is the next step on from the virtual reality goggles. And this is why it terrifies me. And this is why I'm trying to wake people up, to use that horrible hackneyed phrase, is that people still feel this is many, many, many years away, you know, 50 years away, 60 years away. One aspect of AI is, but this aspect is very, very close. And they're not going to stop with this. And the nature of this, once it becomes commercial and money's made from it, they're not going to stop from this. And of course, if you understand the, the, the bigger picture of where this sits, you understand why this is being pushed uh, and how dangerous this technology can be. There are aspects of AI that's very good, but only when it's capped. And at the moment, there's no cap. They are just going to keep pushing forward with this. Uh, and so who's Andy Adamatsky? <clears throat> this is a British professor. And I think he's um, at the University of West, West of England. I'm not, I'm not commenting which university that is. Uh, it might be Birmingham or something like that. And he, um, he, I mean, the quote there, if you read that quote, Mike, he's terrifying. I mean, I would, so I read it out at AV8 and people just gasped. Okay, so it says uh, personal computing will become intrapersonal computing and intracellular. Each human neuron will be hijacked by a self-growing, self-repairing molecular network. Computers will be networks of polymer filaments growing inside and together with a human. Seeds of that network uh, will be injected into embryos in the first month of their development. They will form a gigantic network inside the brain. Computers will be inside us. They will span all living creatures in a united computing network. That is an immensely um, unpleasant uh couple of sentences there, Mike. Somebody in our chat room has said, and yes, what they're doing to animals, they're also doing to human beings in secret. At the moment you see uh, mention of doing stuff with embryos, uh, is he talking about the future? Not in my opinion. Somebody somewhere is doing it. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Um, <clears throat> well, what he's described, see, look, you've got to read what they, these are, these are published papers. These aren't, this isn't in a book written by an author that someone would say is, is off his head. These are published, this is published literature. You know, this is why, this is what shocked me when I, when I started to speak in these circles, is that people didn't realize this stuff is actually going on, to, to kind of echo what you said. Uh, and it's dangerous because of that. And I don't want my kids plugged into this stuff. And uh, I certainly hope that anyone who's got a rational or two brain cells working, they wouldn't want their kids plugged into this stuff. I went through in great detail even what the virtual reality does to the brain, you're shutting down and changing the very, the very function of the brain, not just the function, the physiology of the brain, but you're actually changing the structure of the brain when you use this technology. And the more you use it, um, the least you're going to be able to come back into the normal three-dimensional world and behave uh, normally in a three-dimensional world. It changes the way that your brain works. And it's almost as if we're releasing this artificial intelligence from out of this electronic world into the real world, and they're putting the human consciousness uh, from the wonderful, beautiful three-dimensional world that we should be living in into this horrible uh, electronic ghetto, quite frankly, and prison. It's, it really what it will be will be a, almost like a digital prison. There are aspects that we can use, but where they're heading with it is not a good place. And you, and you are stressing um, there, Graham, that um, people who are allowing their children to use this sort of technology, and you see very, very young children with phones clamped to their, their ears, but you're now talking about this 3D stuff. Parents who allow their children to use this are actually allowing those children to be damaged, their brains to be damaged by what they're playing with. Absolutely. You should not let your kid 
on anything under the age of two years of age because damage done to the brain then can be irreversible. There's no doubt on that. Uh, really and truthfully, they shouldn't be on this stuff under the age of 12 and you must limit it. Uh, certainly do not let them go on these virtual reality goggles because they absolutely damage the brain. Okay, I, I well, well, Graham, look, uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you now that they are getting onto these virtual reality goggles in schools. It's being pushed onto them late, late primary school, early secondary school at the, at, is, is the level they're at at the moment. I'm not sure whether it's happening any younger, but they are absolutely getting virtual reality through the schools already. Absolutely, and you see this, and thank God some parents are going and complaining about this because they're, what they're doing now is have just even just normal computers. Reading a book and reading is not just about looking at something on a screen. And when you just look at something on a screen and don't read it and actually touch the paper, actually your, your comprehension goes down because the brain doesn't just work visually. Uh, they've done experiments on that. So if you let your kids go to school and just read from a computer, your kids aren't going to be as bright and as intelligent. That's point one. That's without all the damage. Um, from the the Wi-Fi, that's a whole other that's a whole other program. Just talking about the Wi-Fi, but these goggles, these virtual reality goggles, they damage the mind. Okay, they they create a depersonalization, derealization disorder. It is known in the literature. Okay, and if you get that DVD, I show you all the science references to back that up. So if they're using that in school, you need to get that DVD, look at it, and you need to note down those uh, references. You need to walk into school. You need to say, you're damaging my kid. You need to stop this. Um, and uh, look, Graham, we'll just end on this one. Uh, the, beyond, be sorry, the Beyond Humanism conference, which took place in Rome in, the, in July this year. Uh, the conference organizers encouraged submissions from a range of disciplines, such as philosophy, sociology, literary studies, cultural studies, critical theory, media studies, bioethics, medical ethics, anthropology, religious studies, disability studies, gender studies, queer studies critical animal studies, uh, environmental studies, and visual arts. Is there anything they've left out there? Well, I mean, what, well, ultimately what they actually lead, lead out, what they're going to leave out is they're going to leave humans out. Because if you look at the title, it's beyond humanism. It's beyond the human. You know, transhuman is, is somewhat an, an old term, really, because they're, 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 they're going past us. They don't want us. They want to move beyond us. And, this, and so when people say, well, artificial intelligence isn't that bad, we can work with it, to a certain degree, but the leaders and the movers and the shakers don't agree with you. They are saying, no, we need to leave humans behind. And I think there's a quote at the bottom of that slide there. Um, <coughs> excuse me, if you could read it, Mike, just right under what you read. <coughs> excuse me. Sorry. Under the transhumanist one. Yeah, yeah we're just, uh, we're, I might we're, just caught, we're having trouble with our AI here. It's coming up. <laughs> okay, I can read it for no, you. It, you says, want. it says, uh, really it says what, uh, what is also worth noting is formation of new cultures and societies which consist of non-human subjects mingling with humans or forming their own separate and previously unseen worlds. I mean, how terrifying is that? Yeah. This is, this is, these are the people that are being funded at the highest level and this is where they want the new society to go. And there's a whole lot more that's, that's linking into this. Obviously, we don't have time to get in. And it is very, very sobering to think about. Uh, well, Graham, uh, you'll be pleased to know then that Saudi Arabia has given a robot citizenship uh, yesterday, I believe it was. Uh, that's around uh, the various mainstream media today. So we've now got our first robotic citizen of a nation state. Uh, where can it go from there? Well, the good news is, of course, that that robot hasn't got any facts because if he got access to the facts, he'd probably be uh, treated as a terrorist and uh, unplugged. Um, yes. We'll end there, gentlemen, uh, Mark and Graham. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll say UK Column's objective here is not to frighten people. It is to make people aware of uh, what is being pushed through the system, usually... Um, hidden in plain sight if we're to stop this despicable stuff we need to be aware of it and remember the golden rule that action conquers fear don't sit there doing nothing speak to other people warn push out the information because that is the way of uh, overturning this uh, and take